What is up, guys? So today, this is our first installment of True Crime Tuesdays. So um, I decided to make the series because um, I wanted to do more research on true crime and see more cases and actually look at cases that are outside of the US and UK and Australia, which is really the base of what I view of true crime. So um, my first couple of videos are gonna be covering um, African cases. Um, this first video is gonna be covering a Nigerian case. Um, and we're gonna be talking about a, I'm pretty sure I can't say murder, but we're gonna be talking about a murder um, and some other stuff. Um, if you like this video, like, subscribe, and hit the uh, and comment down below um, other cases that you would like me to cover. So today's case, we're going to be talking about the murder of Cynthia. But let's listen to her name being read out. Four suspects have been arraigned before a Yaba magistrate court for killing a former army general's daughter, Cynthia Osukogu. The Cynthia Osukogu. Okay, Osukogu. Osukogu. Okay. So Cynthia Oduka Osukogu was a Nigerian woman who was stalked on Facebook, lured from her resident in Abuja to Lagos Hotel under the pretext of business, then drugged, tied up, robbed, ard, beaten and strangled to death in 2012. So this happened on July 21st, 2012 in Lagos, Nigeria. Uh, and two people ended up being convicted. So let's see, let's see how this happens. So Cynthia was born on December, on November 10th, 1987 in Abo Town, Delta State. Cynthia Osogu, Os Osoko Gu was the last child and only daughter of her parents, retired Major General Frank Osoko Gu and Joy Rita Nkem Osoko Gu. She had three elder brothers. Her eldest brother is Flight Lieutenant Kenneth Uchechuku Osoko Gu. Her immediate elder brother is an assistant superintendent of customs, Mr. Williams Ihe Du Osoko Gu. Her third elder brother, Mr. Tony Ozubike Osukogu, lived in Greece. She started schooling in the Command Children School, Lauren. Lauren? I, I don't know how to say this, but it's somewhere in... It's the capital of Kwara State in Western Nigeria. It's a Yoruba state, so I don't I don't know too much about it. I'm sorry. Um, and moved to the Command Secondary School, Joe's, from 1997 to 2004. She was a graduate of English language at Insawara State University and was pursuing a master's degree in public public education in the same institution after resigning from a job with MTN. Cynthia was also a former model. She owned a biz she owned a boutique called Dress Code, which she opened in Kefi, which is a town in An Nasawara State in 2007. She was described as hardworking, loving, and industrious by her family. She had achieved much much by age twenty-four. So she really sounds like I mean, a lot of these cases they say they're um the victims are really good people i believe it i'm pretty sure they're good people and stuff I, I don't know what to what else to say about that um so now we're gonna describe how the incident happened so uh, this all started because of facebook face your books book face happened because of book face so cynthia developed some friendships via the social networking site facebook after chatting with her newly added friends friend oko okwomi Eche Zona Umwa Bofor Umwa Bofor um via her Blackberry Messenger over the pace of about four months and soon she had added she had also added his cousin Izike Elechuku Ol Olisa Loka. Even though she had already had a relation in the United States who often sent her goods to sell in her retailing business they told her they were in the same business so pretty much what um the business the business she was doing is she'll get clothes from other places cheaper and then resell it in nigeria um and just make a living off of that i mean not even a living she's her, her dad's a 
her, her dad's a military general but um that's further from the point just giving you guys some context if you're not african and don't understand marketing and not even african if you're not if you're not foreign i guess if you're not foreign <laughs> um so, okay so they pretty much told her that they could give her the um same products for cheaper and as a business person you're always looking to get something to, to cut costs so you can get more profit so she was inclined to believe them um so these young women these young men they seem normal and they promised to host cynthia when she came to lagos so she had to go to lagos to get these products that's kind of sketchy to me but uh, i don't know like I feel like she shouldn't have went alone, but we cannot blame, like, I'm not blaming her. I'm not blaming her at all, but I'm just saying maybe, mm, I don't know. Okay, so what Cynthia didn't know was that Mwa before had been stalking her for months, patiently gaining her confidence through frequent chats and postings. When she informed him, she usually comes to buy goods in Lagos. They made arrangements for her visit while promising to help her get the goods at cheaper prices. The trip was organized by Eche Zona Mwa before, one of the two new friends. On July 21st, 2012, Cynthia flew to Lagos from Abuja to meet these new retailers regarding the better price offer on the clothes and accessories for her fashion boutique. After landing, she called her mother to tell her that she had arrived safely. The two young men picked Cynthia up from the Motala Mohammed International Airport, Ejeka, and drove her to Kozmila Hotel in Lakeview Estate in Festac Town. At the hotel, they entertained her and offered a, her a Rebina brand drink, which was pre-drugged with ro, ropanol, ropanol, rop, philazepram, ropanol, which is, so that's pretty much a date rape drug. Um, yeah, that's a date rape drug. But, um, so after they, they pre-drugged her and soon they realized that the amount of drugs that they gave her was not enough the drug was not taking it wasn't taking its effect as quickly as they wanted it to so since the drugs were not kicking into her as soon as they wanted it to they decided let's beat her let's beat her and ask her where she's kept her money um so they presumed she would hold a lot of money on her um, she said she didn't have any more money to spare she just came with enough money to pretty much get the products and pretty much stay in Lagos for how, however long she was going to stay in Lagos to get the products and this goal. So, um, when they didn't get any money out of her, they tied her up, robbed her of all the money she brought to shop for her business, her three Blackberry phones, jewelries, international passport, driver's license, and then they awed her and finally strangled her to death. The next morning, after having spent the night with Cynthia's body, they then abandoned her, left the hotel, and quickly unfriended her from face from their Facebook list to remove any trace of their connection. Unknown to them, there was a hidden CCTV camera in the hotel, which report, recorded part of the event. According to the hotel's receptionist account, Ms. Ifewa Njebu, the two checked in at the hotel at 8 a.m. on July 21st, 2012. By the time they checked out, she had handed over the second she had at, she had handed over the second she had handed over to the second receptionist. So they had switched shifts who had taken over duty. So she asked to help she asked her to help them out. They checked in again with Cynthia at the hotel at about 12 a.m. on July 21st, 2012. When Ms. Njibu resumed the next day on by July 22nd, after um, Vivian handed her handed over to her and gave her details about the room already occupied, the room that Ms. Njibu checked in the couple checked in the couple was to expire on July 22nd. After the two left in the morning, the brother came to came to take over the room so she noted that and she was also aware that the other person was still occupying the room Ms. Njebu routinely called all the rooms in the hotel to ascertain those ascertain those who are still there and those about to check out after some time she saw Mwa before coming down the stairs 
Miss Injebu asked Mwa before, after calling his room to know if he was still staying. When Mwa before reached down the stairs, he told her that he would be staying behind, but he should, but that she should permit him to withdraw money from the ATM um, to pay for the day. When he told her his girlfriend, referring to Cynthia, was still upstairs, she did not go up to check. He was not a regular guest at the hotel. He assured her that his girlfriend was there with the room key. Miss Njabu told Mr. Amuafor to return to the hotel before 12 noon, when the payment for their room would expire. He didn't submit the key to her. Olisa Loka came out from the bar and they both left the hotel. She never saw them again. At about 3 p.m., she received a phone call from one of them. The caller said that she, he was the occupant of the room who had left recently and that he was not coming back, and he instructed her to remove the idiot out of the room. She replied him politely to remind him that he promised to come back and pay for the day. He said he was not coming back and dropped the call. Missing Jebu informed the hotel managers about the development and he assured her that since the caller's girlfriend was still in, she would pay for the room. It's horrible. So the manager told her to call the room through the intercom. She called many times but no response. The manager went upstairs, knocked several times, but didn't get any response. The hotel management directed her to use the master key to access the room as a last resort. So she went upstairs, knocked again. After no one answered, she used the, her master key to open the door. And from the door, she saw Cynthia's lifeless body lying naked on the bed. She was lying horizontal with her legs touching the ground. She screamed with shock and rushed downstairs to inform the manager, who alerted the police. From the CCT, CCTV footage played to her by the police, Ms. Njebu identified Ms. Ms. Uh, Mr. before and Oli, Olisa Eloka. He, she was able to recognize the duo when the police brought them to the Area E police station in Festic Town, Lakers. After the body, after the hotel found her body, since her ID cards and mobile phones had been stolen, they could not identify her immediately or call friends and family. Her body was deposited in a morgue in Lagos. And now we're going to go to the investigations. So at all at this time, her parents didn't know what was going on. Her parents, her family, her friends, they didn't know what was going on. And they were just waiting. They were praying for their daughter, their friend, their sister to come back to to come back to um, Abuja. Cynthia's mother, Ms. Osukogu, tried calling Cynthia's phone for five days, but her phone was switched off. On the seventh day, she recalled that one of the men picked her call and told her that Cynthia was sick. Not too long afterwards, they implied that Cynthia had been kidnapped and asked her mother for 20 million naira ransom. Imagine, you killed my daughter already, and you're asking me for money. You already killed this person, you're asking me for money on top of it. Turn that fire, you. Uh, his mother asked them if they killed her daughter, and they said no. She was just sick and couldn't come to the phone. The phone call was traced to Festec. There, her missing person's police report was submitted to Area 3 Command in Festec. This enabled her family to trace her body to the morgue and also led them to the hotel. The police in Lagos delayed the re release delayed the release of Cynthia's body to her parents for burial because they had intended to carry out an autopsy on the body at Ikeja General Hospital Morgue. Police Commissioner Omari Omaru Manko revealed that the pathologist was still working on the autopsy which was still going ongoing at the time she was identified. Eventually her body was released for burial and she was laid to rest in her own town. A ceremonial burial was performed at the family residence of Boji Boji, Owaike North, North local government area of Delta State after the Wekriam Mass. The governor of Delta State, Mr. Emmanuel Odu Oduagan, condoled with the Osukogu family and called the police to conclude the investigations quickly and bring the culprits to book. After Cynthia's murder and investigations progressed through, cell phone records and CCT, CCTV footages, the police arrested the suspects. So now let's talk <laughs> about the crime scene. Lord. Okay, so 
when Cynthia is found, she was found naked with her two hands tied behind behind her back with a with brown tape and supplied with a padlock chain. Her two legs were also taped together. Her mouth was stuffed with hair net and handkerchief, also tied with brown tape round her head to seal her mouth and secure the materials inside. There were pinpoint holes in her white eyes as well as inside the upper part of her airways and surface of her lungs. A condition described as petechial hemorrhage. The pathologist also revealed that Cynthia had suffered pulmonary edema, an overweight of the lungs which from being soaked by blood. Her left and right lungs weighed 40, 400 to 400 and 500 grams respectively due to blood accumulation, noting that her normal that the normal weight would be 250 to 350 grams. The final autopsy stated that Cynthia was as- asphyxiated, suffocated to death through blockage of air into her lungs. Apart from her death resulting in asphyxia, the pathologist John Oladopo Obafumwa also observed that she had multiple bruisings and abrasions suspected to be from biting. Her autopsy further revealed that a dose of of rubber fo- the of the date rate drug sold to the suspects by a pharmacist pharmacist Osita Oji was not responsible for Cynthia's death. After the arrest, several other women came forward to reveal that they had been drugged, tied up, and robbed by the suspects, but they all survived to, to tell the story. According to the reports, these two young men also confessed that they had robbed several other women prior to Cynthia, who happened to be their sixth victim. The gang reportedly specializes in luring unsuspecting young women, robbing them of all their possessions before killing them. Although they were speculations that their motive was ritualistic, it appeared that it was greed and their main goal was to rob and kill. The specific reason Cynthia was killed was not fully established. The police proposed some theories, however. Perhaps the suspects became enraged at the lack of payday after spending so much money to get her there. Or probably Cynthia struggled or attempted to scream even after being drugged with the sedative of the rafofono, rafomo, the date rape drug. She was struggling to see how her money... Um, she was struggling to see how she could liberate herself or make noise in order to attack, attract people to rescue her. The investigating officer, Festac Area Commander Dan Okoro, said, but they were, but they overpowered her. The police also stated that it was very likely that the culprits targeted her, targeted her as they believed she would be carrying large amounts of cash. She was targeted because the suspect had figured out that she was the daughter of, the, of a retired army general. They assumed that she would come to Lagos with big cash, a large bank account, and jewelry. At some point, they discovered that she came from a very good home and felt they could make some quick money out of her. But her elder brother, Kenneth, stated that Cynthia ne- never carried any large large sums of cash and she never even had an ATM card. She used a checkbook. Several other men were arrested in connection with the crime, including the pharmacist who sold the Rofono to the suspected killers without a prescription. Their driver, who always accompanied them during their robberies and a fence. The man and a fence. The man who sold Cynthia's and the other victims goods so there was the pharmacist who sold them okay so to understand this in nigeria you can pretty much go to any there's pharmacists everywhere and you really don't really need a prescription to get anything you can go any to any pharmacist and get whatever you want it's it's kind of like mexico i think i'm pretty sure you don't need prescriptions in mexico but it's really not regulated so that's why that happens so if you're american or just not african or just don't understand that there's pharmacists everywhere. There's pharmacists everywhere and you can get drugs easily, <laughs> pretty much. You can just go and say, I want this and they'll give it to you usually. They just want money. Um, so there was the pharmacist, um, there was the two men and there was their driver who's always with them. And there's someone else who sold all their goods. So in total, it's the two men, pharmacists, and two more men. Um, I think that's five. I can't count. So five men were in, were all involved in this 
crap but two men were the ones who actually killed her and tried to rob her so now we're going to talk about the trial so after one month after um cynthia was laid to rest the trial commenced at yaba magistrate court lagos on august 27 2012 six people were arrested at the beginning of the investigation they included olisa loka ezike 23 Oku Okuonu Mwa before 33, both of whom were identified as the Facebook friends. Others were Sita Orji, the pharmacist who sold the drug, um, the date rate drug to them, and Nonso Ezike, Olisa Eloka's brother who assisted them in selling the deceased Blackberry's phone. The six count charge of bodily uh, the six count charge of conspiracy, murder, armed robbery are unlawful administration of obnoxious substance and forceful administration of obnoxious substance with a view to causing bodily harm were charged to them were read to them the trial commenced with the persecution the Lagos state government calling its first witness before and only saoka ezike were charged with conspiracy to commit murder and felony Orji Osita, a pharmacist, was charged with negligently selling the Rofamol fluorazepam tablets to Ezike, the second defendant, without a doctor's prescriptions and without showing due care. Nonso Ezike was charged with being in possession of three stolen BlackBerry mobile phones belonging to the late Cynthia Osogu. After all the accused and initially pleaded not guilty to all six counts, Justice Olabisi Akinlade of the Lagos High Court, sitting at Ibo City, admitted as evidence confessional statements of the corporates recorded in video video when the first defendant was arrested he confessed that he knew what he did and that everything was over the second defendant that operated the blackberry phone to reveal the shame used in tying his victim this first defendant was arrested in august 12, uh, 28 2012 after he made the confessional statement the attorney general of lagos state misade ipai prosecuted the murders murder suspects revealing details of photos from the crime scene in the court from a laptop. The witness added that he and his team followed the first defendant to his home in Festic and recovered the said laptop, along with some photos and various network SIM cards. On that same date, the first defendant was asked to open the laptop, when he which he carried him by himself to the area commander's office pictures of the deceased laying down lying down and her inter- international passport lying on her chest was really revealed the witness said another prosecution witness testified that from his investigation it was discovered that the fourth defendant nonso received different stolen phones from the first and second defendants on three occasions the fourth defendant stole somebody's receipt in Lapido Market, which he used in selling the deceased phone to somebody in Portaca, and the person was arrested. The witness also told the court of another investigation against the defendants in separate hotels, Chelsea Soup and Penny Hotel Festac, where they were allegedly to have carried out similar acts. The cases were separated because the incidents did not happen on the same day. It was based on the confessional statements by the first and second defendants that they carried out similar acts in other hotels in Festac. In other, in one of his appearances in court, Mwa before denied ever knowing about Rufano or nor did he put it in Cynthia's drink. He also claimed that Cynthia was his lover and they were planning to get married before her death. Mwa before said he met her on Shoprite Mall in Lekki in 2011 when he went for shopping. While while she was shopping at a fashion shop, dismissing the allegations that they met on, met on Facebook, she he also added that when he met her, he, she was making inquiries, so she in, he introduced himself to her, and she did the same. Adding that they exchanged contacts afterwards. He also said that they developed friendship after exchanging addresses and becoming ever very close since then. However, there has been no sufficient, sufficient evidence to warrant this claim. 
The judge also dismissed the claim by Mr. Mwa before that Miss also Kogu was his fiance and was trying was going to introduce him to her father, saying that the lover's story was false because under cross examination. A while before could not tell Cynthia's birthday, the name of her mother, her hometown, or in fact anything about her. <laughs> so like, yo, you gonna kill me, and then you gonna lie on my name and say I was with you? Nah, sir. Nah, sir. Nah, <laughs> nah. It's not happening. Oh my god. Ugh. Though the convicts pleaded not guilty and tried to withdraw the confessional statements they made to the police, claiming they were under duress, the court admitted the statements they were made they made were corroborated by testimonies of the witnesses and the evidence provided by the police the judge said that the fact that the police produced a video footage of the convicts making the conventional statements also helped in countering the claim by the convicts that they made the statements under duress the court was satisfied that the conventional statements were not given under duress and admitted them into evidence a confession is sufficient to gain conviction said the judge the confessional statement of the accused is consistent with the state of body and consistent with the medical evidence. The judge said she would have the the judge said she would act on it accordingly. While delivering the judgment, the judge said that the accused deserved the sentence as they were not remorseful for their actions and they were telling the court lies after offering confessional statements to the police. The judge also found du found the duo gu guilty on three other counts and sentenced them to a total of 20 years imprisonment each. They were sentenced to 14 years in jail for conspiracy to com commit murder, three years for conspiracy to commit felony by stealing, and three years for stealing a BlackBerry phone. Wait, okay, I'm confused how it's not just murder. How is it conspiracy to commit murder when they actually murdered the person? It make it make sense. Make it make sense. You're only getting twenty years. Twenty years. Like one of them was only twenty three when this happened. So twenty years, you'll be forty three. And you don't think he'll continue to continue to do that in the future? You think he'll maybe 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 I don't know I don't know I don't know. Okay um the judge acquitted the um the judge acquitted and discharged osita and non so so osita was osita was the um pharmacist and non so was the brother who was selling the phones i don't know why you would discharge why would you acquit them like they did something but it's whatever it's whatever why would you acquit them why why it's, it's cool it's cool uh, while delivering the judgment, Ms. Akin Lade said she relied on the evidence and testimonies provided by the prosecution. She said, having carefully analyzed the evidence and testimonies before court, the prosecution proved beyond reasonable doubt that Mr. Zuma before and Ezekiel and Ezekiel murdered Mrs. Osokogu. The judge stated that the evidence of the prosecution remained uncontroverted and relies mainly on the testimonies of witnesses and evidence it was also clear that the first witness was untruthful and deceived the court in sentencing both men okay 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 so they're getting more sentencing good we're good okay so
In sentencing both men to death by hanging, the judge said it was no longer relevant to know who between the two actually killed Miss Osukoku. So every both of them, both of them's gonna die because we don't know who did it. We like I, we know those two did it. They was involved with it. So we just gonna say they going both to jail, as they should, as they should. <laughs> um. The second defendant acted in consent with the first defendant and will bear the consequences of their actions, irrespective of whoever committed the offense. The judge held that with its 10 witnesses and 17 exhibits, the prosecution's case against Mwa before Aniziki was unconverted and that the circumstantial evidence brought to the store was cogit, con- cogit? Cogent, cogent, complete, unequivocal, and compelling. The judge held that the circumstantial evidence brought to the state, brought by the state in proof of the six counts of conspiracy, murder, and stealing against the accused persons were cogent, complete, unequivocal, and compelling. Counseling for Orgy and Nonso had requested bail for both of their clients, and Justice Akin Lade had granted bail to Orgy with two sureties shorties shorties i think shorties are people to make sure that they don't they don't do anything like they just watch you the grant the court granted bail to orgi osita and Ezeke nonso while the other two who are allegedly committed the offense of murder were remanded to kikiri kirikiri prison <laughs> kirikiri kirikiri that's such an interesting name for a jail kirikiri prison prison lagos the court granted bail to Orgi Osita and Izike Nonso, while the other two who allegedly who allegedly committed the offense of murder were remanded at the Kirikiri prison, Lagos. For Nonso, Olisa, Olisa Oloko's younger brother, the judge granted him bail with two short ties, sure ties, sure ties. Adding that one of his short ties must be a civil civil agent, not less than grade level 14, while the other must be a property owner with a genuine certificate of occupancy. On March 23, 2017, the Lagos Court, the Lagos State High Court, Ibo Seri, sentenced Mwabufo and Iziki, Iziki to death by hanging. As they should, as they should. Oh, like this one. Oh, this is horrible. Now we're gonna talk about the aftermath. The aftermath of Cynthia's murder pretty much showed that the internet is pretty. It's, it's dangerous. It's really dangerous. Um, this happened in two thousand twelve. So Facebook, I think it came around in like two thousand seven, two thousand six. It's still pr- like it was still pretty fresh at that point. It's still popping and stuff. So there was a lot the etiquette was different like i'm not blaming any uh, i'm not blaming her because this is a new thing that just came out you know this is a new thing that just came out and you're trusting you're just trying to like you're she was legitimately just trying to make business contacts and she 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 died like she was trying to make she was trying to make money she was literally just trying to make money and she trusted these people because they were acting like they were business people but they were scammers 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 um so after this happened her mother advised used to be very cautious of making friends with people that they don't know so yeah don't i get a lot of people adding me on facebook that i don't even know i'm just like who are you do i i don't add them because i'm like who are you like especially the random the random indian the random Ghanaian, the random Nigerian men that just like add you on Facebook for no reason. Like, how did you even find me? Who? How do you even know who I am? Like, go away. Like, leave me alone. Um. So yeah, don't add people that you really don't know, at all. Like, no. Um. She stated that the youth should be very careful, especially when they're making friends on social media. Like we have seen in the case of my daughter, such friends may have ulterior motives. The police said that the incident was a wake-up call to parents to become more vigilant about what their children are involved with while surfing the web. Stricter regulations were proposed for the federal government to ensure and restrict the sale of 
the sedative drug Rofenol over the counter without the doctor's prescription in Nigeria. Okay, so they 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 actually did something good. They they stopped selling um Rofenol, Rofenol the the date rape drug over the counter. Thank God. Um, the judge's final verdict lifted the hopes of some who had lost interest in the case. Cynthia's story inspired a film adaptation called Murder at Prime Suites, released in 2014. So that if you made it to the end of the video, I just want to personally thank you. I mean, I don't know how else I would thank you, but I would just like to thank you for watching. And I... <sighs> Uh, I mean, the last couple things I want to say is I really feel like this story is messed up because these men, they literally could have just went out and got a job. Like, I know the economy is horrible in Nigeria, but must you kill? Like, must you really kill to get your money? Like, must you really kill someone who's trying to make a living to make your money? Like, what are you doing? Like, make it make sense. You know what I mean? Um, my prayers go up to Cynthia's family and her friends and everyone who knew her she seemed like a great girl and i'm really happy that those guys were put down i wish that the brother or the brother who was selling the phones and stuff would would have gotten more more time and i also wish that the pharmacist would have gotten more time because why are you selling that why are you selling date rate grubs like i know it's just because something is legal at the time does not mean that it's okay for you to really do but it's whatever um i'm glad that they put in they started regulating it but honestly um that's pretty much all i have to say like subscribe comment down below and let me know what you would like to hear about next um yeah thank you bye guys